Hey everybody, welcome again to Challenge Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt, our next guest, two of my favorite women on the planet. Uh, Lauren Parker is a 2019 paratriathlon world champion. And Laura Siddle is the three-time Ironman Australia champion. How both of you guys doing? I'm great, Bob. Thank you. Hey, Bob. Always yeah. a pleasure. Yeah, very well. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having us on. So, uh, Laura, talk a little about the shirt you're wearing. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit limited on uh, clothing attire at the moment, having uh, left us uh, New Zealand for five weeks, and I've now been in the UK for four months. But, yeah, this is one of my... Uh, own designed uh, t-shirts that I do just uh, a bicycle with all the different places or locations that I ride and um, yeah I've just designed one for CAF as well inspired by Lauren um, she's kind of one of the images on the front of the t-shirt so yeah that's going to be up on the up on my web page and hopefully sell some t-shirts and raise some money for CAF. So you guys met uh, not not the most optimal conditions so when I go back, Lauren Parker was top triathlete, 2015 silver medalist at the age group uh, at the Ironman World Championships in the 25-29, and then went pro in 2016, and then 2017 was getting ready to race against you, Laura, right, at Ironman Australia. And it was April 18th, 2017, and Lauren, take us through what happened that day. Yeah, so I was preparing for Ironman Australia and I had the best uh, preparation I'd ever had because I have had so many uh, injuries in the past and this preparation, I had didn't have one injury. I was feeling really strong and ready to go and, and race. And um, I was on one of my last training rides before tapering down to, to the event and I was on my last two-minute effort and both my tires burst and I went flying into a guardrail at 45 kilometers an hour. I broke my shoulder, broken ribs, punctured lungs, broken pelvis, broken back. And you know, all that can be repairable, but my spinal cord got damaged as well, which left me instantly paralyzed from the waist down. And you know, my life changed in just a split, split second. And I was rushed into, uh, spinal surgery and that same day I was told that you know I would never walk again and I was in hospital for six months and I thought that I had nothing to live for I thought that my life was over and Laura you went on to win that Ironman Australia 2017 but uh, you knew about what happened to Lauren and I think didn't you go to the hospital to meet her yeah, so um, oh, I just get goosebumps thinking of it now. And I, I was just actually kind of capturing it on, on paper this afternoon. I, I was gearing up to go and race um, Ironman Australia. And I knew of Lauren. I didn't know her at that point, but I knew her name. And I knew that she was this up and coming pro athlete. She was a very good swimmer. And she's definitely going to be one to watch in the race. And then, you know, that... 10 days or so before the race, just news filtered through the triathlon community that, that Lauren had had, a, had this crash and was in hospital. And then as you know, the following days, the news came out that she was paralyzed. And yeah, having never met her, but kind of felt a connection just because we were meant to be on the start list to get the start line together in a few days time. Um, something just kind of like struck me and um, I, decided and it, I don't know quite an odd decision I, I when she was in hospital when I was after the race I was flying out of Sydney and she was in hospital down that way and I just kind of reached out to some mutual friends and say hey look I'd love to come down and just just meet Lauren and I guess I, I don't even know what I was kind of wanting out of it I just kind of guess affected was affected by her by what had happened because you know it could have been could have been any of us absolutely and what was the conversation like at the hospital? <laughs> I remember it was um, it was the first day Lauren had gone outside, which I came thinking, you know, and I was so, I was quite worried about meeting Lauren because I just thought I'm going to, you know, what do you say? I'm going to put my foot in it so many times. And we, I think I remember we met downstairs in the hospital. She wasn't on the ward. She was with her mom. And 
she'd just been outside and I kind of tried to put this really big positive spin on going, oh, that must be really exciting for you to get outside. And she sort of just looked at me and we went, it was horrible. She said, you know, everyone was staring at me and I hated it. And I just, and you could see, like Lauren said, it was like such, like even trying to comprehend what she was going through um, and those fears. And, and I'm pretty sure people weren't staring at her, but it just brought it back down to earth then. Um, but then we chatted and it was fine. And um, yeah. I think we, yeah, and we've just kind of, yeah, kept in touch. I'm, I'm so pleased I, I did it because I have a, a very good friend in, in Lauren now, regardless. Well, and then that summer, Lauren, you came on the radio show. Yeah. Uh, and all, it was only a couple of months after her injury. It might have been July or something. And yeah. you said that you wanted to get back in the triathlon. And at that point, at that point, it was, if you want to get in triathlon, there's one place you need to be. And that's in San Diego at the San Diego Triathlon Challenge. Did you know anything about this crazy event before you, you basically, you decided to check yourself out of rehab and come, not really knowing me, not really knowing much of anything, but coming to San Diego. What did you know of this event and, and how impactful was that for you? Yeah, so I was in rehab when I uh, spoke to you on your radio show and, um, you know, I had no idea what the event was about, to be honest. And I was just, uh, you know, excited that you offered me, you know, that opportunity to go to San Diego to the Challenge Athletes Foundation Triathlon Weekend because, you know, I wanted to get it back into triathlon and you said, this is where it starts. So I'm like, yes, great. Um, you know, and I actually checked myself out of rehab because they wouldn't let me have five days away to go to San Diego and come back. They would only give me three days. Well, you know, I can't get over and back in, in three days. So the best decision I ever made was to check myself out and jump on a plane the next day with Brad and we were in San Diego all of a sudden. And you know, I thought that I would be turning up to, you know, tell my story and, and what happened. But what I turned up and saw was just, just blew my mind. I saw, you know, people that had, were in worse positions than me that had had accidents. And I, I saw one thing and, you know, everyone was so happy and they were smiling and, you know, little kids just running around smiling and it really um, it had an impact on me, you know, that if these people can participate in this triathlon, you know, then so could I, you know, I, I, it really gave me, it really, you know, gave me hope that I could get back into the sport that I, that I loved. And that is definitely where it started because I came straight home and I, uh, you know, jumped into a hand cycle and, and racing chair and with the help of CAF uh, for my equipment, my hand cycle, it wouldn't have been possible. So uh, that CAF, CAF weekend is where it started for me in my career. I remember that uh, that Friday night at our Celebration Mobility Dinner, um, you know, you were out in the audience and I told your story and everybody just uh, started clapping. Everybody just stood up and gave you a standing ovation. And you were sort of looking around like, what's going on? What, what's yeah. happening? And, and Laura, you were there at that moment. Yeah. That was a pretty pivotal moment. I think you could sort of see the light bulb go on for Lauren at that point that, you know what, maybe this is not an end. Maybe there's a beginning here. I think for that... sure. Go ahead, Laura. Oh, no, you go, Lauren. You go. Oh, no, I was just so overwhelmed when, you know, I got this standing ovation. And to have uh, you there, Laura, as well, it was a really special moment. Yeah. And then within a year, you're taking a bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games. Within a year of your accident, <laughs> injured April 18th, and not even a year out. So at that point, when you get a, a bronze at the Commonwealth, did that make you feel, okay, this is, I'm back, I'm, an, I'm a para triathlete, the Olympics is coming up, uh, it's all ahead full? Definitely. You know, uh, I raced at the Commonwealth Games, and it was only my third para triathlon. Uh, and I didn't even expect to, 
you know, be at the Commonwealth Games when I was back in hospital, let alone crossing the line and getting that bronze medal. And, you know, I was very lucky to cross that line because I had to do a flip down the finish line <laughs> in the racing chair after hitting a barrier. And I was on my back for quite a few minutes, but luckily I got turned around and still crossed in, in you know, to get that bronze medal. Um, so that was quite an embarrassing moment as well, you know, doing the flip. But it was also a very special moment because I saw that, you know, with um, the amazing support that I've had and, you know, with that belief in myself that anything is possible. And, you know, I, it, it, you know, started my triathlon journey. So, Laura, you have become a huge CAF supporter. Like we mentioned earlier, you've created T-shirts as a fundraiser. You you in the Real Mothers of Triathlon. I know you were involved there and raised dollars there. What did you learn from being? You've been at, I think, two or three of San Diego Triathlon Challenge weekends. What is it about CAF that, that really, uh, really impacted you? Oh, I mean, I think that that first weekend and, and being there with Lauren and, and Brad and, and, and you and, and meeting everyone. I mean, that was such a life-changing moment for all of us, I think, in terms of eye-opening of just the the community the passion the the kids that were just like lauren said they no fear just pure joy because they were with their friends and nothing was going to stop them and they didn't see any barriers to what they could do they were having uh, like you couldn't keep you couldn't keep track of half of them they were moving that fast around the place um and i think for me, it just emphasized that importance of the power of sport and how how sport can be so crucial and life changing to get people back on track to show them that they have got something to live for, to strive for, to, that they can be like anyone else in achieving their goals and their dreams. So Lauren, this last year, 2019, was a special special year. You became the first challenge athlete to be supported by the Bahrain uh, 13 endurance team. And you go and win the world championship, the paratriathlon world championship. And I think you did challenge Bahrain and killed it there. Uh, half, uh, basically a 70.3. Talk to yeah. me about that year, a pretty special year. Yeah, it was a very special year and a very full on year. Lots of traveling, you know, internationally and my whole goal was to win that world championship and to be able to accomplish that goal was a very, very special moment, you know, coming down that finishing shoot and have, you know, having all the memories and thoughts that I had in my mind that what it took to get there over the last few years, what it took to actually get to that point and cross that finish line in as world champion it was, it was so special. And to have, people that I loved there at the race watching me and support around the world, uh, support from CAF uh, was, you know, it was such a special moment. And uh, then after the World Championships, I uh, prepared for Bahrain 70.3, which I was so excited to get back to Ironman and I'm in 70.3. I was so excited to, to race. And that was another special moment because I got to race it with Brad by my side. And uh, it was like, I was on, I was on course and it, it felt like I was back to normal again, back to uh, doing what I loved to do before my accident. And to do it with my best friend, Brad was, I couldn't ask for anything, uh, you know, anything better. So. So when we talk about the San Diego Triathlon Challenge, obviously such an impactful event, big fundraiser for CEF, but also just the number of lives that are changed like yours. This year, we're not able to do it. So we're, we've pivoted and we've created the Community Challenge uh, presented by Vega. And so what we're asking people to do is to, between August 8th and October 18th, to do a million miles, swim, ride, run, roll. We expect Lauren to do half of them. Uh, and then raise a million dollars and uh, we'll be able to fund a million dreams. That's sort of the goal. And I, I'm figuring that both you guys are going to be involved, right? Well, I'm, I'm a little bit worried because 
Lauren is quite, you know, she's very determined in her training and I've seen how many kilometers and miles she's been clocking up on Zwift the past yeah. few months. So <laughs> I'm going to have to put some hard miles into uh, just keep on track with her and, and raise some money to, to level the playing field. I, I like that. So uh, Lauren, for you, just you're not content with just being a triathlete now. You're talking about for Paralympics, now that it's been delayed a year, you're like, well, why not add another sport since I've got another year? So I think I'll go for hand cycling and paratriathlon. Talk a little bit about the hand cycling and, and how, uh, how tough that has been to adapt to from paratriathlon to paracycling. Yeah, so I thought I'd give myself another challenge with the extra year that I've got up my sleeve. I like challenges <laughs> and... Yeah. Um, the hand cycle being my strongest leg in the paratriathlon, I thought that, you know, it, it could be an opportunity to uh, try and make the Australian team for the hand cycling for the Paralympics. And I actually did my first hand cycle race last weekend and I beat a couple of world champion times. And I, um, I think I surprised the Cycling Australia um the people in cycling in Australia with the time that I did. So it's looking all positive and I'm really looking forward to that journey and trying to qualify for, for hand cycling. And it's, uh, I'll be doing the 16 kilometer time trial and the 50 kilometer road race if I qualify. Wow. And you'll be able to squeeze that in around paratriathlon. <laughs> Yeah, so the paratriathlon at the Paralympics is the third day in on the schedule. Um, and then the hand cycle races are three days after that. So it works in really well. You know, my, all my focus is on the, the paratriathlon, but, you know, I, yeah, it'd be exciting if I can do all three events. And, you and know, I've still it. got to qualify for the hand cycling and hopefully uh, next year there'll be a couple of international races I can get to um to to make that possible lauren what what's been the when you look at back at this journey from 2017 what's been the lowest moment for you uh the lowest moment you know i to be honest every day is a struggle being in a you know in a wheelchair having to live my life uh, differently you know I wish that I could go back to my old life that I loved but I just try and find the positives in in the situation and look at you know my goals and what I have to be grateful for you know it could have been so much worse and uh, I just yeah try and find the positives and you know that gives me strength and and I try I believe in myself and and my goals and I've got absolutely amazing support. So, and in terms of adapting to uh, a new way of life in sport, in paratriathlon and adapting to the new, new pieces of equipment, uh, the hand cycle and the racing chair and having to use my arms for everything now, that was quite a challenge. But, you know, I'm getting used to the, the, the new pieces of equipment now and I'm getting stronger in my arms. So yeah, it's, it's good. What's been your favorite CAF moment? Favorite CAF moment, definitely the first year I went to CAF and saw everyone was so happy and smiling, definitely made a big impact on me and meeting so many wonderful people and meeting yourself, Bob, uh, was very special. You're a legend and I feel honored to, to know you and be part of the CAF family. Uh, definitely that, that year was a very special time for me. I think that year bonded the three of us, uh, Laura, yourself and myself forever. Cause we're, we're all part of your journey, Lauren. And it's, it's been a hell of a ride so far <laughs> and we're just getting going. I can't yeah. wait till we're back in Kona and back on stage with Lauren Parker winning the hand cycle division at the Ironman world championship. That, yeah. With Laura on stage as well, yeah. with the pro women, that'll be a pretty special day. <laughs> having, huh? Yeah, yeah, gosh, yeah. Well, I'll be, I'll be there regardless, having her uh, scooped up all the gold medals as well at the Olympics. All right, so you guys are <laughs> going to be involved. Challengeathletes.org slash community challenge. 
again, a million miles, a million dollars to help fund a million dreams, just like Lauren Parker's. You guys are the absolute best. Oh, and swag. Oh. When we talk about San Diego Triathlon Challenge, <laughs> the swag, that's like the best thing in the world. The racing is great, but you get great. Oh, wait, what do you got? You get, look. I oh, got my you got your nice. box. I like it. <laughs> It is, after we bring that event back next October, it is the best goodie bag in sport. There's like oh. 500 bucks worth of stuff in there. And I know Lauren's it's got her right. socks on too. That's awesome. I do, and I'm my. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, wait, we have new socks this year for the 2020 Community Challenge. Great. So we'll get you guys your new socks. Thanks so much for taking time, you guys. It is always such an honor to connect, especially connect all three of us together. This is even better. This is awesome. Yeah, I mean, three different yeah. time zones around the world. So yeah. Oh, yeah, wait. Yeah. I'm in San Diego. You're in UK and Lauren's in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's the new world, right? This is the, yeah. <laughs> this is COVID communication and it's very it best. Is. Well, thank you guys for being on Challenge Athletes Live. I really, really appreciate everything you do to make CF great. No, thanks, Bob. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much, Bob. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Lauren.